Good morning, One Hope Church. It's Derek here, and welcome to One Hope Church Online. We're here. I'm hanging out in the lobby. Uh, we're about to have a three-minute countdown, so as always, get your devices ready. Drop them on your television, pull out your laptop, jump on your cell phone, whatever you have this morning. Make sure to say hi and comment below. Um, we're going to have a few minutes, so grab a coffee, a snack, your Bible, uh, some pen and papers, and uh, make sure to like and share the message today. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll be back in just one moment for the announcements. Good morning, church. How are you doing this morning? Um, we're so excited we get to do church again this Sunday. So welcome to One Hope Church Online. My name is Derek. I'm the heart and soul coordinator here at One Hope Church. Got a few announcements for you. Um, but first, hey, if you're a first time guest, we still want to connect with you. And the way we've been doing that online is asking you to text hello to 863-777-5639. We want to interact with you this morning, so uh, make sure to drop a comment on whatever platform you're watching on this morning, and uh, we have host ready and able to interact and meet you. Isn't it incredible that we can still do church this way? Um, you know, we've been asking everyone to make sure to like and uh, share the message. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, but uh, if you can share the message to us, that's been, uh, in this season, we've been saying that's, uh, that's just as good as an invite to church, so do that this morning. Uh, next on the announcements, we're asking you to check in. So if you're on your cell phone, wait until after service, but uh, check in. Uh, we, at One Hope, we check in with a purpose. So uh, check in on social media and those platforms. Um, this month, we, uh, we get a chance to partner with some pretty cool organizations, and our partner is Plant with a Purpose. 
Uh, they plant trees across the globe and they play an important role in deforestation and um, every 10 check-ins by us here at One Hope will help plant a tree. So make sure you use the hashtag plant a tree when you're checking in. And we want to just throw this out there too. We, uh, we had Zoom Hope Groups going on. So currently we're in a pause and a break, but make sure you stay connected with us through social media and see uh, what's going to happen in the upcoming weeks. So uh, see what new groups roll out and see which ones you want to join. Hey, if you uh, need prayer or would like prayer today, make sure you email prayer at onehopechurch.org. Pastor David will be the one who receives those requests and we'll be praying for you. Lastly, uh, we want to share with you how you can worship through giving this morning. Uh, the first way is to go to onehopechurch.org slash give, and you can contribute there. Or you can text One Hope Church to 77977. Or you can mail your check to the church's address, which is below. Hey, and as we've mentioned uh, over the weeks, we've additionally set up a Hope Fund, which was uh, designed to provide outreach and benevolence. So make sure you give, uh, or indicate, excuse me, your giving type when you contribute. Uh, we're uh, so blessed to have some amazing church families and your generosity. And so we're so grateful and thankful for all you're doing out there. But maybe you're in a position hey, and you want to say, hey, Derek, um, you know, uh, I would love to give, but actually uh, we need some assistance. Uh, we want you to reach out to us. We want to discuss those things with you. And you can do that by reaching out to care at onehopechurch.org. Worship's beginning, so let's get in there. Hey, I want to encourage you this morning, wherever you're at, uh, let's lean into worship. Let's lean into the message this morning. And let's lean into the voice of God this morning. I'll see you in there. Whoa, whoa. 
from strength to strength. Whoa, whoa. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Yeah. 
the verse of the song that talks about the love of Christ being our firm foundation. It reminds me of the verse in Ephesians that says, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Hear this part. Built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure grows into a holy temple in the Lord. Lord God, we just thank you so very much that we get to be a part of this structure, this temple that you are creating that brings you honor, brings you glory. And Lord, it, the foundations of which have been laid uh, since the prophets have passed and, and Christ himself being at the cornerstone. Well, we get to be a part of that story. And Lord, we're so very thankful that we are included into that, um, into that structure, into all that you are doing uh, on this side of eternity. Lord, as we go into the service uh, this morning, I pray that you would be with all of us, that you would reveal to us the truth that, it, uh, that you have specifically set aside for us this morning. And Lord, that truth would, would embed itself into our heart and then it would grow into the fruit that, that you have for us. Lord, thank you so very much that we have this opportunity to come together and worship and praise you and hear your word. Lord, thank you. Be with us. We honor you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. What if this dream that I can see could change how things are to how they could be? Two letters, that's all. If takes a chance and risks a fall. Others say, why? If answers, why not? Dare to take action. If starts with a thought. One little if in one little me. To fight the current, to swim upstream. If doesn't ask when. If says now, from here to there. 
if is the how. If starts sooner, stays longer, keeps the faith, gets back up, goes back to work, sets the pace. So now I'll start, I'll begin. Without the start, there'd be no win. If counts the cost, a price to pay, sees the potential, then seizes the day. If today, then tomorrow. Show something for the breath you borrow. Take a leap, just a step, growing old without regret. Tell me now, what's your what if? What will it take to scale the cliff? You have the vision, make it come true. Sometimes that what if is you. In the end, it goes to show there's no telling what one if can grow. Finish what you start, and then the time has come to dream again. Who knows what a day will bring? What if this changes everything? Well, good morning, and thanks for joining One Hope Church Online. My name is David, and I'm the pastor. And hey, we're so glad that you joined us this weekend at One Hope Church. I said it last week, and I want to say it again. Michelle and I are so honored to be your pastors. You know, One Hope Church is a multi-ethnic, multi-generational, life-giving church that's on mission. And if you don't know what our mission or our vision is, I'm going to share it right now. It's that we share hope, we strengthen faith, and we serve our community. And that is uh, our desire every week. Well, hey, last weekend, we kicked off a series called If, and it's based off of the book by Pastor Mark Batterson of National Community Church in Washington, D.C., and I love uh, some of the things in this book, and I'm glad we've been able to pull some of the, the great thoughts out of there because all of this centers out of uh, the book of Romans chapter number eight. And by the way, thank you to all of you that joined the Version Bible reading plan this past week on Romans eight. I love hearing how God is speaking to you through his word. And hey, we're starting a brand new plan this week on Version that you can be part of. It's also called If. It's not by Pastor Mark, but it is uh, on that same thought of what if uh, God is working in our lives. And uh, hey, I think you're going to love the twist. It has a spoken word video every day that goes along with the devotional and the Bible plan uh, and the scriptures that you read. So hey, the link's being dropped uh, across all our platforms right now. And you can always go to the website www.onehopechurch.org, and you can find uh, the link there. Well, hey, last week we talked a lot about if only regrets and how we can receive God's grace into in, our lives, and we can leverage the regret that we have and use it for a purpose, that we would take those things that we regret and use those to help and bring healing to somebody else who's going through some of the same things or making some of the same mistakes that we've made. Well, hey, today we want to talk about some what if possibilities. Ever ask that question, what if? What if? Well, uh, Ed Catmull was president of Pixar Animation Studios until he retired last year. And, you know, Pixar's produced some of our all-time favorite films like Toy Story and Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, and and I love that movie, Inside Out, that they put. Well, Ed wrote this book called Creativity, Inc., and he goes off on this if tangent in the middle of his book, and he talks about uh, what he calls Pixar marriages, people who went to work at Pixar met their spouse, and then they had what he calls Pixar kids. He says, you know what, if Pixar never existed, these kids would have never been born. What if? Uh, There's a classic movie that deals with this same kind of thought. 
uh, one of my favorites. It deals with this what if, uh, you know, certain things didn't happen the way they should have. How would life be different? The movie is called Back to the Future. And, you know, in that movie, uh, Doc Brown says to Marty McFly at one point, obviously the time continuum has been disrupted, creating a new temporal event sequence resulting in this alternate reality. You know what? One little if can change the event sequence and result in an alternate reality in your life. If. What if? Hey, back to Ed Catmull for a minute in his book. In it, he also tells this if story about his life, his, his personal experience. Back in 1957, Ed and his family went on a little road trip to Yellowstone. And uh, on the way back, they were driving this winding canyon road with a steep cliff, no guardrail. It's like out of a movie, right? And this car driving in the opposite direction drifted into their lane. And his mom screamed. His dad swerved, and Ed estimates that they came about two inches from driving off the edge of that cliff. And he makes uh, this little back to the future statement when he says, two more inches and no Pixar. Hey, imagine that. Two more inches, no Toy Story. Two more inches, no Finding Nemo. I mean, all those Pixar couples uh, had no inkling that two inches could have kept them from ever meeting their spouse or having their children. Ed calls them two-inch events. You know what? Life can sometimes be a game of inches, and while this idea may scare you a little bit, I want to tell you it doesn't need to, especially if you are in a relationship with the God of the universe who orders our footsteps and the word says that he works all things together for good for them who love him and are called according to his purpose. Two inch events, a two letter word called if, I think both are very similar. And you may be one if away from experiencing an alternate reality in your life. And I want to tell you, I think that could be some good news for you today. So let me ask you this morning, what is your what if? What's your what if possibility? What is the if that will change the event sequence in your life? We said it last week, there's approximately 1,784 ifs in the Bible and like, you know, some of them are like, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, that's a, that's a good if. How about this one? If you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin. Or how about this one? If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Hey, these are incredible promises and amazing ifs but there's one more that we talked about last week that uh, I think is really one of my favorites and it comes from Romans chapter 8 and it's verse 31 it says what then shall we say in response to these things if God is for us who can be against us if if God is for us who can be against us don't miss the important message in this verse. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't want you to read it as like, is God for us? Uh, or if God is for us? Like, is, is he really for us? No, the message is, hey, you can be confident today. God is for you. And if he is for you, which he is, who can be against you? He's not against you. He's for you. He's not waiting for you to get out of line and make a mistake so he can punish you. No, that's not in the character of God. God is for you every day and in every way. He proved that when his son Jesus went to the cross and gave his life for us, even before we believed or we put our trust in him. Romans chapter 5, verses 7 and 8 says, 
very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person some might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, when uh, we were against him, he was for us. Hey, that's the heart of God. He is for you. He is for us. And if you haven't come to a moment uh, where you have surrendered your life to Jesus, I'm inviting you even in this moment right now to open your heart to that if possibility to your life. What if you surrendered your heart to God? What if you turned your life around by accepting Him? What if instead of leaning on your own hope or your own ideas or your own power or strength, what if you leaned on the God of the universe who loves you immensely? You experience that moment of grace. Your life is set on a different trajectory. You know, the Bible says that God won't withhold any good thing from those who walk with Him. That's the heart of God. God is for you. Get this today in your spirit. God is for you every day in every way. And one moment with Him can change everything. Mark Batterson talks about a book by a lady named uh, Barbara uh, Ehrenreich called Living with a Wild God, a non-believer's search for the truth about everything. And in this book, Barbara says that for most of her life, she self-identified as an atheist. Why? Because of her family. Her family gave up on God some hundred years ago. And, and here's how it happened. Her, her great-great-grandmother was on, uh, grandfather was on his deathbed and uh, so his daughter, who was Barbara's grandmother, sent for a priest to come. The priest said he would come and, and minister last rites, but he wouldn't come for less than $25. Really? And that was the moment that Barbara's grandmother renounced her faith. She never forgave God for what that priest did. A few years later, Barbara's grandmother died during childbirth and a priest happened to be in the neighborhood and he showed up at the house and, and he was uninvited but he came in and and he started ministering last rites and Barbara's grandmother used her last ounce of strength to grab his crucifix and throw it across the room such a sad moment the story in her book makes me wonder if Barbara's grandmother Rather than uh, renouncing her faith in uh, God, maybe she should have just renounced her faith in that priest, right? The person that failed her rather than the God who loved her. I want to tell you this morning, please, please, I I'm begging you, please don't put your faith in me or in any other pastor for that matter. I I we're, we're all human, I promise. And I promise you too, there's going to be a time when I'm going to mess up or I'm going to let you down in some way, shape, or form, uh, I, you know, I'm not always going to do it just right every time. But our faith should not be in flesh and blood. Our faith should be in Jesus Christ. He is the one who will never leave you. He's the one that will never forsake you. He is the God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you can put your trust in Him. Here's what I'm getting at. You can turn your back on God. But I need you to have this knowledge in your heart and your mind today. God's not going to turn his back on you. You may renounce your faith in God, but his goodness and his mercy will follow you all the days of your life. No matter how far or how fast you run, if you turn around for just a moment, you'll discover that God is right there. His goodness and mercy is going to track us down because he wants to show his love to you. He wants to demonstrate his heart that is for you. We talk a lot about how we need to 
seek God. But I want you to know today that I believe that God is actually seeking after us. Luke chapter 19 and verse 10 says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. We talk a lot about coming to Jesus. And I, I believe, you know, we do need to make a decision to surrender our lives to Christ, to follow Him. Uh, it, it starts at that point. But I'm not sure we're always the one that's finding Him. I'm more convinced now than ever that Jesus is the one who's found us. He's the one that's come after us. May, maybe for you today, it's time to stop playing hide and seek with God. Maybe why don't you just let yourself be found by him today? See, the worst lie you can believe is that somehow God is against you. This morning, if you don't get anything else that I'm saying, I want you to hear God is for you. I believe there's a real enemy. We call him the devil, and he wants to plant seeds of doubt in all of our hearts and minds all the time. And maybe it's a doubt about the goodness of God. And, it, and it, if that seed takes root in your heart, in your mind, the devil knows that it's going to be like a computer virus that just infects the entire hard drive and messes up the whole system. Can I tell you, God is for you. This is a positioning statement for your life. God is in your corner. He's on your side. His will is good, and, and it's a good will for your life. And someone this morning or this afternoon or this evening or whatever time you're watching this message, you need to take hold of that promise for your life right now. God is for you. He's not against you. I want to encourage you with that today. Maybe you've, you've thought that God is against what you're doing. I want to tell you, God loves you. He is for you. Discouragement is like spiritual amnesia. We lose faith because we forget about the faithfulness of our God. Now, hey, we need to do what we need to do. We, we got to work like it depends on us, and we got to pray like it depends on God. But the Bible says that he who began a good work in you is going to carry it on to completion. Some ways, our obedience and our faith are both part of this equation. God does some things because of us, but, but, but I think most of what he does is in spite of us. You know, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So it's not self-confidence that we have or that we should have. My confidence is uh, not in me. <laughs> my confidence in myself, not very high. I know who I am and I know who I am not. I know that unless the Lord builds the house, those who labor work in vain. That's what Scripture says. I also know that God's power is made perfect in my weakness. I know that God takes the foolish things uh, to humble the wise. Uh, my confidence is in the character of God. He does not change like the shifting shadows. My confidence is in the word of God. It does not return void. My confidence is in the promises of God. My confidence is in the spirit of God. And the same spirit who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will dwell in you. I'm not talking about self-confidence or self-help today. I'm talking about a holy confidence. I'm talking about living your life knowing that God is for you. My confidence isn't in my obedience. It's in God's faithfulness. My confidence isn't in being lovable or likable. My confidence is in the fact that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ Jesus. My confidence is in Romans 8.31. If God is for us, who can be against us? Yeah, I'd love to talk about all the words in that verse, but to me the key word is God. 
how you interpret this verse depends on what comes to your mind. What do you think about when you hear that word God? What do you think about when you think about God? And I think the problem for many people is the image that we have of God is, is, is a faulty image. It's not right. You know, in the beginning, the Bible says that God created us in His image. But somehow, some way, uh, a, a long life, I think sometimes we, we, we try to create or view God in our image or through our perspective. And when we do that, we end up with uh, a God, a lowercase g, who looks like, thinks like, talks like us. And that's not God at all. That's an idol. We project our imperfections on God. So we think maybe God's holding out on us in some way. The truth is we're holding out on him. We're not sure if God is 100% for us. Because the fact is we haven't been 100% for him. Listen, God flies above all of that. And I think we underestimate his goodness and his graciousness to our lives. To fully appreciate Romans 8, 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? We got to really know that God is for us. We got to know who he, he is and we got to examine who God is. And I just want to take you to one passage with two verses from Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. And it says this, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Man, don't we know that to be true so many times. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. See, God describes the difference, the, the distance between our thoughts and his thoughts looking to the expanse of space as the heavens are higher than the earth. You know, in the beginning, God said, let there be light. And those four words were the catalyst for all of creation. From the 118 elements in the periodic table to the 100 billion galaxies that make up our universe. So I got to ask you this morning, what are you worried about today? Whatever it is, I want, to, I want you to know God is bigger. His ways are bigger and higher. He is bigger than whatever problem that you are facing today. So at some point, we got to stop talking about how big our problems are. And we got to start talking about how big our God is. We need to start preaching to ourselves preaching to our problems we got to realize that god is bigger than anything you're facing right now i know it's looked big right now because we're magnifying that thing we're magnifying that problem we talk about it we worry about it we we're, we're telling all our friends about it and it becomes so big because it's like all expansive and all inclusive on what we're focused on but rather than focusing on that thing if we'll lift our eyes up to the heavens and we see that god's ways are higher than our ways his thoughts are higher than our thoughts if we'll look up we'll see a god who is way bigger than this thing that we're dealing with right now said that on a dark night that the human person can see about 9,000 stars with their, with their naked eye. Uh, the most distant one we can see uh, just with our eyes is called Deneb. It's about 1,500 light years away from Earth. But when you look into space, the thing is, you're actually looking back in time. It's kind of a time lapse. So when you look at that star, you're not looking at it based on what it looks like tonight when you're looking up at it. You're looking at it and you're seeing the light of that star based on what it looked like 1,500 light years ago. It, it actually might not even exist anymore. 
See, you're seeing stars that may have died long ago, but their light is so far away that it's still traveling towards us and we still see it. Let me bring this a little closer to home. Our nearest star, the sun, is approximately 93 million miles away. So if you drove there at 65 miles an hour, 365 days a year, it'd take you about 163 years to get there. It's a long time. But light traveling at 186,000 miles per second, that light leaves the sun and it hits us about 8 minutes and 20 seconds later. That's our nearest star. And astrophysicists have discovered galaxies 15.5 billion light years away. A light year is equivalent to 5.88 trillion miles. That's a distance that's just incomprehensible to me. And what I want you to see today is God says that distance is about the distance between his thoughts and our thoughts. That distance, that 5.88 trillion miles for a light year, and we've seen galaxies 15.5 billion light years away, that incomprehensible distance, that's the difference between our thoughts and God's thoughts, our ways and his ways. So here's, here's the thought you need to get out of this science lesson. Your best thought on your best day is like 15.5 billion light years short of how great and how good God really is. And I believe in a God who's all-powerful, a God who is all-present. I believe in a God who is high and exalted. I believe in God who can make uh, all things work together for good. I believe God who can make and break the laws of nature because he's the one that instituted them. I believe in a God whose thoughts are higher than my thoughts. His name is Wonderful. It's Counselor. It's the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and he shall reign forever and ever that's the God who's for us today. I want to close this morning with a, with a story. We've all been missing sports, so let me give you a sports story this morning. During the 1990 NBA season, I know that's a long time ago. Some of y'all weren't even born yet, but I remember it. <laughs> uh, Michael Jordan, let me just drop this in, UNC Tar Heel uh, player, Michael Jordan, uh, who went to the NBA and was just amazing. On that night, Michael Jordan dropped 69 points on the Cleveland Cavaliers. And after the game, a reporter asked uh, one of the other players that's one of Jordan's teammates, Stacy King, how he would remember this epic performance. I love this. Stacy King, he, he watched most of it from the pine that night. He was on the bench most of the game. And he had like this sense of humor. And Stacy, he scored one point in that game. And I love his response to this reporter. It's so classic. He said, I'll always remember this as the game that Michael Jordan and I combined for 70 points. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Stacey King rode Jordan's coattails all the way to the NBA championship, not once, not twice, but three times, right? And I want us to know today that God is inviting you to ride his coattails. You may feel like just every once in a while you might score one point, and he's out there doing it all, and that's true. But we win because he's won. He, he wins the victories for us. He goes before us. And I want to tell you today, God is for you today. God plus you is not just a majority. It's a super majority. God is on your side. The question today for you is, are you on God's side? How do you know? We started out this message talking about a two-inch event. And I believe that someone watching is positioned in this moment to experience a two-inch event in your life today. It's going to change the trajectory and the event sequence of your life forever. Let me explain. 
Romans 10, 9 is one of those if verses in the Bible. And it says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That changes the eternal event sequence of your life. It results in an alternate reality, and and it, it does it right here and right now. Romans 8, 5 says, Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. God wants you to experience life and peace. And it happens when we surrender ourselves to Him and make Him the Lord of our lives. One little if can disrupt the time continuum. You know, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, if changes the event sequence. And ultimately, it results in an alternate reality for your life that the Bible calls heaven. And I want to tell you that's good news for us today. Would you pray with me this morning? Jesus, I pray today that you would help us. Help us to not just be be, be hearers of your word only, but help us to be doers of it. Lord, today was a, a word of faith delivered, and it can only be received by faith. And I'm believing that there are people listening and watching right here in this message, receiving your word, and they're receiving it by faith, and it's activating your grace in their lives today. And I pray for those that that need that two-inch event that's going to change the entire trajectory of their life right now. God, help us to take hold of your word, that you are for us and not against us. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, this morning you may be listening to me and you recognize your need for a change in trajectory in your life. Maybe uh, the, 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 the higher thoughts of God have escaped you. And you really have a hard time understanding how much He really is for you. And I challenge you to take that step of faith today. Just move two inches towards Him. You can find hope and grace and a God who loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to give his life for you so that you could live your life with no condemnation. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, but God is faithful and fair. If we confess our sins, he'll forgive our sins. He'll forgive every wrong thing that we have done and he'll make us pure. So today, if you're watching and you want to receive that grace that Jesus has for you, you can make a choice today. You can make a decision to open your heart to the hope and the peace of God in your life. I want to pray with you. You can have this assurance of faith and know that God will carry you through the troubled times that you're facing and anything else that you face because He is for you. If you'd like to commit your life to Christ or maybe you're watching today and you need to make an assessment and recommit your life to Christ today and say, Lord, I know I failed you, but today moving forward, I'm following after you. I want to pray with you. And so I just want to challenge you to pray with me. You can pray this prayer right out loud, right where you're at, or pray it in your heart. Would you join me in praying, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for my sin. Please forgive me. Come live inside of me and make me new. I receive your love. I receive your salvation. Thank you uh, today uh, that, that I can give my life to you. Lord, I make you my Lord and my Savior and my soon coming King. Thank you for the hope that I have in you. Pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate people that are praying that prayer today. And I want to challenge you 
Uh, if you prayed that this morning for the first time or you prayed it again to recommit your life to Christ, I want to hear from you. You know, you can drop a comment right now and whatever platform you're in, say, I'm making a decision for Christ. But maybe you'd love to just reach out to me personally. You can text the word HOPE to 863-777-5639. I promise nobody's going to like try to bomb your email or your, or your text uh, number. We're not going to show up at your house. We just want to send you a few messages this week to encourage you in your decision. You know what? You can also reach out to me by email. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. If you have a, a, a prayer request, you can uh, email me at prayer at onehopechurch.org. Or maybe you're going through something right now in this season and you need some assistance. You need some help. We'd love to talk to you about those things. You can email me at care at onehopechurch.org. All of these comes directly to me alone. They're private messages. And I just want to uh, be able to stand with you in prayer and let the church come alongside of you and help you any way we can. Hey, we want to say thank you for your faithfulness and giving. If you want to uh, give to One Hope, there's uh, many ways you can do that, but you can go to onehopechurch.org slash give is like the easiest way to do that. And we just want to say thank you uh, during this season of uh, being separated from in-person gatherings. You guys have been such a blessing, and uh, we love you. And uh, uh, been working with Sinopolis. We're going to be rolling out uh, plans within the next week or so uh, to let you know exactly about our going back to in-person gatherings. But we want you to know we love you, and we're praying for you, and God is for us. Hey, we always end our messages and our services with a blessing. So if you want a little blessing, you can put your hands out like this. If you want a big blessing, you can stretch out your arms like this. And we pray that the Lord would bless you, the Lord would keep you, that his face would shine on you and show you his favor this week. Hey, we love you. God bless you. Grace and peace is my prayer for you today.